Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 257, May 2nd. May Day was yesterday, which my daughter reminded me of, and she had to go like drop a, a gift on somebody's doorstep, knock on the door and run away. Is that a thing or something? I, I didn't quite get the whole story before we had to go run off to soccer practice. Anyway, May Day was yesterday. Today is the 2nd. We have a lot of stuff to go triage, which is probably what we're going to spend most of our time doing. Uh, this meeting is recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now, live on YouTube. Let's go ahead and talk about what we're talking about today. Uh, first of all, roll call. If you're here, say hi. Um, a little bit of news on roll call. Uh, Sean has decided he's not interested in working on Wix anymore, which is fine. So um, he's done a lot of great stuff for us in Wix 3, Wix 4, uh, but he's off to do other things. And so... Uh, it's just Bob and I now running Wix. And of course, we're very happy to have chat and all of the other you that have been contributing. And there's been a lot of people contributing into 401. It's been encouraging, I'd say. Pull requests always take extra effort, but it was really nice to have people find and fix bugs in 401. But we're going to talk about that in a minute because we're going to do issue review and triage. We will be talking about those that have pull requests and all that kind of um, stuff. We'll do the new issues, things that just came in that need to be triaged. We will go over the 401 um, issues, and then we will talk about the V5 future issues. Um, actually, probably at the end of the 401 issue review, we might take a moment to pause and talk about the 401 uh, release timeline. Basically, they say, hey, how many new issues came in, and what's the status of 401, and when do we want to decide to release this 401 thing? Uh, we'll do that. Then we'll just uh, kind of talk about the five timeline again um, at the end to line up for questions and comments and other things people want to talk about. So, so your agenda is, has branches. Yeah, I, I kind of was going to do V5 future, but maybe we need to talk about like pause and talk about uh, the release review yeah. um, before going back and doing V5 future triage. And I just kind of did that on the fly. So anyway, uh, let's go do trash. Bob, you ready? I'm ready. All right. So these are new issues. These are issues to be triaged. These are things that we have not seen yet. So let us jump into 7420. Duplicate components and fragment compiles without errors. Compiles. Well, yes, yes, yes. Oh, this is in a Wix lib. Right. So yes. Okay. So yeah. So in the past, Wix libs when you built the Wixlib, it'd be able to recognize, hey, you have this duplicate uh, symbol within these fragments. And I was hypothesizing that this might have something to do with the um, access levels, changes to the access levels that's not getting caught. Um, so why don't you go ahead and give this to me in V5 and I'll see if we can get a little more strict because um, it would be good if we caught these errors earlier than in the linker, well, um, if we can. To be clear, it's not an error to have the potential to have duplicate symbols. Yeah, if, but if, if they're you, in the same fragment, we should be able well, to catch that. If they're in the same fragment. Uh, that, that, okay, okay, that's, yes, 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 I agree with that. Duplicate components in the same fragment. And I think we loosened it up to handle the other case where you're going to have duplicate symbols across fragments that if they don't get referenced, everything works out. But then we lost the check for within the same fragment. Um, so it's, it's interesting enough. They'll be like, yeah, maybe we can tighten this up in V5 because it would be a good thing to do. So that makes sense. Hey, and Ron's made it. Great. Um, error dialog for SQL database error not showing 7422. Um, yeah, error dialogs. Bob, I know you did a lot of work in this space. Yeah, this one is actually fixed now. There was a um, <clears throat> nine-year-old bug um, oh. and an eight-year-old bug that, uh, oh, you don't have to show all of my force push failures. Um, <laughs> it, it took it, a while to track it down, I know. It, I watched this yes, for a while. It, it did. It was, um, uh, yeah, it was very, it was difficult to diagnose. It took me a while to figure out where it was, and then um, coming up with the multiple fixes that I needed was, was harder than I would like to admit. Um, and, of course, this, is all, this all happens at uh, runtime. And, you can see the the link to seven four four four, which was the yes. the root cause of the problem here. I see. We'll be triaging that in a minute. Yep. All right. So we should take this in four hundred one, right? I believe so. Yes. Because 
it's bad that our air dialogues aren't showing up. Yep. Cool. All right. So that'll be going to 401. We will talk about the root issue when we hit the root issue, maybe. I don't yeah, know. We'll see. That's fine. Um, all right. MS build harvest item group doesn't allow customized additional options per item. Hmm, that seems reasonable. Something we could do in five. Yeah, additional options. Cool. And I think there is a pull request out for this, which is kind of nice. So yeah, I think we could put this in five. We can give it to Nier since he's already pulled the set the pull request and go from there. Oh, there's, okay. I see the pull request now. Yeah, it's here. Okay. Comment was marked as spam. Oh, this is not near, is it? No, some no. random other person. Actual spam. It, it was just, it's the same green and almost the same shape. <laughs> like that's going to confuse me for a minute. All right, cool. So that could go five and we will do the pull request at time. There's been a lot of pull requests and kind of going through them. Um, we'll talk about some of those in 401, I think. All right, build fails uh, when a bundle contains two or more remote bundle elements, 7429. Oh, that's unfortunate. So this is, it builds but fails to run. No, it fails to build. Yeah. Oh, right. And this, all right. And Nier sent the fix for this. Yeah, we should take this to 401. We should allow this to happen. We should allow this to work. This should work. That's the words I want. So let's go ahead and sign to Nier because he does have this pull request. I hoped I would get to this one yesterday, but I got stuck on another one that was taking a while. We should definitely take this to 401 because you okay. should be able to do that. I agree. Um, 7429, uh, 7436, errors when using Wix UI Mondo in four. Uh, we keep getting these people doing things. Is this a real issue? Uh, tester here, thanks. Ah, yes, this is I a see. real issue. Okay. Um, there was some bad copy and paste. I'm not gonna, not gonna say who badly copy and pasted. It was me. Um, <laughs> that caused a problem, um, but with validation, um, which is unfortunate because validation is is uh, unreliable in yes. our CI build. Yes, it is. So we have to turn it off. And yeah. had we been able to leave it on, it would have caught this error from mm. because we have a test. Right. And that made me cry that we have a test and we can't actually get all the validation errors, all the code yeah. through it. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, this is a simple uh, one line removal fix. All right. That well, is already out there. So we should take that in 401. I agree. Cool. You'll notice that a lot of these 401 already have fixes in them that helps make them 401. All right. 7437, specifying source files 404. Uh, this is a how-to link, I guess? Yeah. Okay. So this could go up for grabs? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We get reports on, on broken links, and this is the only uh, broken link. Um, Should we unbreak the link and then let other people bring the how-to back? AKA remove the link? Yeah. I left it there because the mentions of it are all about, yeah. A bunch of places in the reference doc where you know we we avoid duplicate documentation by saying go look here. This is one of those. Um, when I added this how to topic, it you know cleaned up and made the overall reference doc better because yeah you know, there are a bunch of ways you can specify source files for payloads. Yeah. And uh, I don't want to, uh, yeah, I don't want to lose it. I mean, a comment, a to-do comment would do the trick. Or a link, wanna... or link it to three, because it's not different. Mm, is it not different at all? Mm, not really. The rules are the same. Eh, we could link it to three, yeah. The syntax might be a little bit different, but not really. Even for the things that Matt, for these, these didn't change really in V four. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, you know, to an extent, there, then I would, you know, it's probably about the same amount of work to, you know, recover that topic. Your call. Well, 
at the moment it's nobody's call because no one's assigned. I think we should probably do something. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> All right. The specifying sources in th four is um, is identical, I believe, to three, even with the extra subdirectory and all that. All that's target directory handling. That has changed some in four, yeah. but source has not. So, okay. I was that. thrown by the uh, uh, by bind paths. Oh, which are you know a little, which are newer. The automatic bind path. The automatic bind path are a very nice convenience and yeah. All right, uh, 7438, component group source seems to be ignored. Oh, this one where the source is specified. Let's see, where was it? The source is specified in the component group and then the source is specified in the file and the expectation is that the sources would combine when really by specifying the source on the file, you overwrite the source being inherited from up above. And that's the behavior. Um, no, it doesn't exist in four. I, I think this is all by design. I think this is a second issue. I didn't know that there's a second issue. What is this? Is this not like formatted correctly? Um, Hey, I can't see. Why can't I see the source? Is that only available to... Ah, I can't edit? Hmm. I'm wondering if there's like text missing around this. XML You're not locked text. in. I'm not? I have... I'm in his Wix bot. Should be able to do it. Hmm. All right. Well... To be fair, there's no difference. Oh, okay. That doesn't help me then. Uh, I don't understand. There's one more piece I don't know doesn't exist... If source dir equals deploy and deploy has file okay so the directory deploy has that component file name is that grabs deploy file okay yeah component subdirectory subdir file name tries to get deploy file two instead of deploy subdir file two subdirectory doesn't play into source no the the target directories do not play into source directories and that's always been true too it doesn't matter your target directory tree it's your source directory tree so yeah, this is, yeah, that's the way it works. You could, you could request a different design that certainly could be entertained. We need to kind of work your way through all of that, but this is all by design right now. This is the current design. What is being described here is the current design. And we would need to approach it differently if we wanted to change that design. I think that's what I would say. And there are some weird things that you could be like, yeah, it'd be better if it did this way. And I, would not necessarily disagree on some cases if we thought holistically about it. So, all right. Okay. So I think that's all not a bug, like, or I, whatever we do for not a bug, I think. Um, yeah. That is the way it works. And you could argue it should work differently. That would be a different feature request. Okay. 7444. Error messages aren't correctly sent. Ah, here it is. Display, process, all that kind of stuff. This is the root issue of all those other issues and right. And it's the variatic, variatic. How do you say that? Variatic. Is that it? Yeah. Variatic sure. variables in macros, <laughs> which is just kind of like layering of trouble. Um, anyway, so Bob, but they're so, so, so much prettier than without. They, they are definitely prettier and they do cut down on other bugs Actually, once you make them work, right? <laughs> yeah, the, the the problem wasn't with the macro the variadic macros. It was with the variadic functions. But there was an intersection between the fix w went into the macros, but the bug was actually in the in the functions. Yeah. Or bug, quote unquote. Um yeah, the fix versus it was documentation to be brutally honest. Oh, I, it was documentation of C handling of variadic well, bug plus missing doc. Yeah. Right. So anyway, 
Uh, after multiple attempts at narrowing down this issue and then finding the undocumented behavior and then resolving it to using only documented behavior, Bob has a fix for this. We should take this in 401 because we took the other one in 401. Yep. This is all one yeah, kind of one yeah, bug. Exactly. But it manifests in a few different ways, interestingly. So I think bring all of them would be a good thing. Yep. All right. Um, 7451, related bundle element causes access violation crash. Well, this is definitely going in 401. Yeah. <laughs> um, build with a related bundle, this, and it crashes. Okay. Add a related bundle with it, that, and it crashes. I see. And we have some pointers going awry here. Basically, you could have one type, one each of the related bundle types. Ah, okay. And so, of course, there's already, you get an automatic related bundle yep. for a bundle's upgrade code. So you right. add a second one and there's some minor explosions. Got it. Some pointer of mythic gone awry underneath the things. All right, cool. So we definitely should take that at 401. And Bob has the fix for it. So that will go that way. All right, carrying on. 7454. Message queue group results in ice 03. Is this another naming thing? Must yeah. Right. You good to take this one in 401? You should just clean it up. Yep, I agree. Do that. Yep. All right. That's an example of one that didn't get a bug fix with it, but you know, we got a bunch of them that came with a, a pull. I, I, I it, have so. one. I wasn't sure whether you would agree that it should go into 401. Yeah, I mean, ice, ice 3 validations are really annoying, and there are typos, so we should fix them. Yep. And there's no other way to fix it, so that's that. It was the one about, so Zach's talking about the one about component group source, that there should be a warning. I don't know where we put a warning. Between all the source things, That that's the behavior. There's no warning expected be, between those. That's It is the way it works, and a warning would be, annoying in the case where you know how it behaves you're like yes i know i don't want you don't want to suppress a warning because you're using the feature in the way that you know it works the thing is that it's very easy to expect the feature to work in two different ways and you'll find out which one works by using it unfortunately um, because it's not exactly clear which one is going to be the answer so that's why part of the reason bringing that doc back is probably a good thing. And um, if someone wants to sit down and say, all right, given that there are two paths that both seem logical, let's do something that makes it easier for people to know how to go through this is a good thing. Well, you know, there's also maybe a, a <clears throat> an historic element that is complicating things because it used to be the case that the output from your compiler was not in a ready to run hierarchy directory hierarchy. Mm. And so setups, one of setups jobs was to do that was to lay the files out in an expected tree. And you know, these days it's probably more common that, you know, the, your output, the build of the out, uh, the output of your build is ready to run. That's, that's a, that's a very good point is that today people are much more used to having their files laid out as they would be installed. Yeah. Where in the past, that was not nearly as like, in the past we're talking 2000. <laughs> Closer to 2000 Surely than farther not. to 2000. There's no way that yes. what I think of as the olden days is actually that far away. <clears throat> but yeah, so I, I, I agree there could be maybe more done here, but we would need to do it holistically, so. Um. Well, we have a we have a start with the, um, the path, the searched path output when you have a missing file. Yep. So, like, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, yeah, we're, we're thing. getting there. Um, again, if someone wants to kind of sit down and say, hey, I thought about this, here's some proposals, be like, yeah, okay, we should talk about those. Uh, all right. So we took the 7454 message queue into 401, which means we need to look at 7455. Wix four projects do not support removing compile items from the build. Um, so you can't in an item group to compile, remove an example of this. So uh, this is true, you can't. And so I tried it in a CI sharp project um, over the weekend to see if it worked and there's did work. So um, 
we should take this in five to behave more like the other .NET projects. You can use remove if you do the explicit import of the SDKs. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought that was that was normal for the, the auto globbing. Yeah, I thing. thought so too, but somehow they got the C-sharp projects put the auto globbing in a place where it, it worked. Where, and, and I was like, huh, I don't know how they did that. And I missed the fact that they got that working. So we should, I should go back and look at that more closely. So I'll happily take this in five. And I want to go look at that more. Kind of goes in with the um, the new artifacts layout thing. It's like, there's a few things of like, all right, let's get caught up a little closer, even closer to the C-sharp projects, mm -hmm. uh, SDK, other SDK builds and try to make that work. So in the meantime, you can work around this by doing explicit imports if you really want to do that. Um, but yeah, it's like, oh, cool. Something about their placement. They put it where I wouldn't think, they must have put it in a place where I wouldn't think they would. But then I don't know how this other thing was. Anyway, I have to go investigate because it's like, I don't know how they did that. That should not work. And yet it does for them. So I'm now very curious. All right, documentation uh, 7456, documentation for Wix tools concepts, heat wave harvesting doesn't mention include attribute. I didn't think harvesting did includes, but. No, it, it's same. referring to the, to the items. Yeah, you you need to point at a directory, oh. and the way you do that is by including okay. the directory cool. in the someone, item group. Someone could add that documentation if they wanted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I um, mean, unless you want to take a, it, I do not. Right. Um, it's a general it. problem, I think, of of you know how much do we start documenting MS things build. that we rely on, like MS MSI build. or MS Build. Yep. So, well, if someone wants to kind of think about this holistically do enough for grabs, cool, they can go do that. Um, auto generate directory ID keys are not unique. So in here, there's a subdirectory three deep and somehow these two are not ending up with unique directory IDs, they should. Um, go ahead and give this to me in 401. I need to go figure out why we, what unit test is missing that didn't catch this. And if it, and I'm assuming that this is breaking because they have the error messages that must be that that I will then go add that test and figure out the fix. Um, definitely get this in 401 because it may change some IDs, which is bad. So we definitely want to get that in 401. So yeah, that will be, I expect it'll be pretty straightforward once I figure out what went wrong. So 7459 ends up in 401. Yep. Cool. All right, and if I hit F5 here, they're all gone. No, not quite. Oh, actually, that's pretty good. This I, seems to be yeah, okay. that I have to write up something there. So got it. Very good. Uh, all right. So <laughs> that was the new ones. <laughs> Let's talk about the ones in 401 that we're looking. This is all the 401 bugs. I'm going to refresh here because we've added oh, a few. Don't refresh. It just looks worse that way. <laughs> it's but it's correct. Uh, yeah. We have 10 open, six closed. Um, so we have 10 to get done. We will talk about the timing of that given the number that are here and the number that came in. Um, so um, I don't know if I really want to talk about the closed ones other than just that the count is here um, too so much. The, the closed one, uh, to be clear, right now there is no 401 branch. Uh, uh, okay, yes. So... To go over the process, we are these are all fixed in five. So if you go off and get the dev build of Wix five, these issues are fixed there. A four hundred one build and the timing of when that four hundred one build dev build will be made available will be done. We can talk about it. And these fixes that are listed here, when they are fixed, they will be cherry picked into the the four hundred one branch to be created. And um, we'll get a dev build out of that if you want to pull down early uh, versions of that. Um, so we've been doing work here asking people to try to get the fixes down to a single commit to make them easy to uh, cherry pick over. Honestly, if it's more than a single commit, it's kind of scary to take in the 401 anyway. Um, and so far, everybody's been doing that for the people that have submitted them. And plus, Bob and I doing those too. So that's the thinking. There will be a 401. The timing of that branch kind of depends on the timing of the release and all those kinds of things. I'm hoping to not do it repeatedly to do lots of cherry picking. I'd like to just go through one time and do the cherry picking because that's easier. Um, and 
then we'll have the 401 branch. It's kind of the hope. I know it won't just be one time, the fewest number of times possible. So all these are in five right now. All the ones that are closed are in five. So look at the top. I don't know if we really need to go over the closed ones. We more need to go over the ones that are open to kind of thing. So uh, to make sure that they're on track, assigned to people, then otherwise moving them forward or some amount of status. I don't think I saw Christopher here. He said he's going to take um, some on this. After this meeting, when we talk about timelines, I'll, I'll go drop a comment on this one just to say, hey, our timeline is this, just so you know so that he, he knows what needs to do to get this going in that time frame, um, if we're gonna see anything fixed on that. I just went ahead and closed all the ones that I have fixed. Okay, so I should refresh then. Well, it looks prettier with only six open. There we go, there we go, that, okay. Yeah, that does feel much better. Yeah, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, all right, so anyway, that doesn't stay, change the state of 7379. We'll follow up on that on the timing. Um, 7399, I, I almost had the fix for it, but I was spending time on other people's pull requests, so I haven't um, done all the testing necessary for me to get this one going, but I will have that fixed here shortly. Um, oh, did this finally make it in? All right, this, this is the one that I was working on all day yesterday, trying to get this pull request straightened out, and um, thankfully they granted maintainer access to their branch, so I could... They, when they did the rebasing onto the latest develop, it got really jacked up. So I had to rebase it. And then it turns out another change had come in and I actually broken the unit test for this, which was like two changes, believe it or not, in 401 um, collided. So I fixed the unit test check for this and then um, the build didn't happen. So anyway, I spent a lot of time trying to fix this one up. So just in case those of you are out there, pull requests are great, but they're not free for us. Like I was really glad the person did the work. They did really great work, but getting the pull requests in sometimes creates a lot of work even on our side or just additional work. So you're like, hey, here's a pull request. Just take it. It's like, nah, it still creates work, but very glad that um, person did this and it looks like the build finally did complete cleanly and it is in. So yay, I'm just happy to see that done. Um, all right, so we have several more here that are fixed. This next open one here, 7416, the downgrade error message. Um, this is missing a unit test. The person hasn't responded to it. It's a one line change. It's actually a one word change on this. Um, I would like to see this in, so I will probably be writing a unit test for this and getting it in. And either I will, they've also allowed maintainers to update their branch. So either I'll push the change into their branch and accept the pull request, or I'll have to create my own branch and close our pull request. I don't know what the best protocol is for that, but we'll come up with, I'll come up with the right answer for that. And we will get this one in. This one won't take too long. It's mostly just have to go with the unit test for it. So that is 7416. Um, 7429 was the other pull request I'd hoped I would get through um, to yesterday. And I got caught up in the other one. So this one I think is going to be good to go. I just need to finish pushing the buttons on it. So 7429 should be good to go. Much like 7416 just needs a unit test. So that's great. Um, 7454 just got open today. And uh, Bob was ahead of it. But, yeah, I have, a, I have a pull request. I'll, I will have a pull request out today. All right, that's great. Um, so that'll be taken care of. And 7459 is assigned to me just today. Haven't looked at it because I've been looking at other people's pull requests in 7401, which is all good. And I will take care of this. And I expect this will be very straightforward to verify and then probably a very straightforward fix. So this looks good. Like we're looking pretty good for 7401 as far as what we're doing here. So let's go take a pause here knowing that we have, we have, one issue that needs a unit test written, and I'll wait maybe a little bit longer. Maybe I'll poke it one time. Uh, we need to follow up on this one. Otherwise, it's just going to fall out of 401 is probably what's going to happen. I need to fix that, and I need to fix one, and Bob's already on his way on his. So basically, I have two to do and a couple pull requests to go push along with then this one with we don't know what the status is of. So that's five, four out there, five to kind of take care of. So if we say that, what is the 401 timeline? I put June 5th back on the board. 
as kind of our our latest desired date. I don't know if desired is the right answer. Uh, latest date that we discussed. Um, mostly because I wanted to evaluate the how many issues did we get in the last week or two since we talked about Wix 401 and how much more time do we want to give one for the issues to get fixed um, time for like 739, which is we don't have a status on plus hours. I'm not so worried about us getting hours in like this week. Yeah, I expect we'll have most of these issues solved this week with just one I don't know. about. Um, so any thoughts about June 5th or earlier? We never really came up with what earlier would be. Didn't we say the 16th or the week of between the 15th and the 19th? I don't remember yeah. where we landed. Yeah, it was somewhere in there. Okay. We got more in the last week. Yeah. I didn't know if that changed the algebra at all. I'm looking a lot in the chat. Does chat have any uh, ideas while Bob kind of uh, sits here on the spot while I'm like, oh, this one or that one or like, I just don't know if we, because we're going to, we got a couple new ones. Yeah. Do we want to leave a, like our... I really don't want to do a 402 on a timeline. And part of me is like, you know, if we just say we do 401 two months after, is that just what we do? Like we release on April 5th and then we release on June 5th. And that's just kind of the way it always works. Well, uh, that was my recommendation. So I'm fine with the change. Um, so it would be basically, yeah, we, re we release Wix 5 on uh, April 5th, 2024. And then we release Wix 501 on Wix on June fifth, twenty twenty four. I don't assume that we're going to need it, but you know, it's whether that's a safe assumption is an interesting question. Yeah, Ugh. assuming people aren't going to pick up pre releases, then we're always going to end up in this. That someone finds a bug afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think we found that one month is too fast. Like the idea of doing April fifth and then May fifth, that's too fast. Um, yeah. Part of it's also just too fast in that I don't really want to do a release that fast after working on one for so right. long. I don't a want to just turn around break, another month please. and do it again. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, I, I go a little so bit. My logic would be, yes, we have incoming that we're still taking. So we should, you know, push out a little bit. And, you know, I'm reasonably, I well, again, <laughs> my original thinking is, you know, it gives people time to pick it up, try it see when it comes down, you know, what doesn't go all the way up um, and, and what still needs work. So so what's the downside of going later than earlier? It's just a little bit longer for people to pick up 401. But I don't think, like, the people that know about 401 are the people that are here with us in chat, which means they knew about all the RCs and everything like that. You guys are just traveling along with us. Very much glad that you are. And then the people that have a bug fix in 401 and are waiting for that to come. But I haven't heard anybody like really saying they have a date that they needed it at like or desired it at. Um, so I don't know that we need to bring it in sooner other than it's a distraction. But at the same time, if we go a little longer, then that releases the, reduces the chances of a 402 being a distraction. Exactly. That's the balance. That's the balance. I really want to get started on five, but... You know, we're discovering things and, you know, pretty much unanimously agreeing, yep, that's a bad bug. And we need to, you know, it's a, it is an adoption blocker to use a term I haven't had to use since I left Microsoft. Um, so, you know, it's something it's worth fixing. Any thoughts from chat? I wonder if they can hear us. I'm not, we're not even getting a thumbs up plus one. No. Everybody's like, whatever, guys. We don't care about 401. Let's talk about five. Which actually, that was what somebody said. I'd agree with them. I'm I'm fine with that, yeah. <laughs> um, I kind of like just saying it's two months after and making it really easy, and then we don't have to spend, a, spend the time. All right, so Zach confirmed they can hear. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but he refuses to respond to the underlying question. Yep, um, that's fine. All right, I, I'm inclined, just don't have anything to add. Yeah. All right, yeah. I'm inclined to go with just kind of two months after the first release is the, the mop-up release, assuming we need one. 
And given people's behavior, I'm just going to assume that we're always going to end up in this bucket of, yeah, it'd really been nice if you picked up a f the RCs, but because people don't, we're always going to have some people that pick up RTM and then things that were like, yeah, we really should fix that. Things that were embarrassed enough that were like, yeah, we'll just fix that. That's the key. That's yeah, the key. And my hope is. is that we get, you know, um, as as we start doing shorter releases, yeah. there'll be less opportunity for embarrassing stuff to slip in. It's very true. I, I I agree with that thought process. And I can also, you know, start to gird my loins against embarrassment. <laughs> well, I mean, bugs happen, so. Yeah. All right. I, I think we're going to just kind of put the the stake in the sand for now and say it's June 5th. It's, I, I still think it's going to be later that. I guess we could show up in two weeks and be like, let's do it sooner, but I doubt it. Um yeah, and, and Zach's, I agree with you. Hopefully people get better at using the previews. Um, maybe, you know, to be fair, 401 was a very long time, totally fell off a lot of people's radars, I'm sure, and then we ratcheted up those RCs and Mesa said, okay, we're done. No, really, we're done. Really, really, we're done. So hopefully if we get into a more continual cadence, much like uh, .net, then people will be like, oh, all right, they really do release this, then we should pick up that RC. It really is the thing that we should be validating. Maybe we'll get that culture rebuilt around here. All right. Um, so June 5th, I'm going to remove that question mark. Um, and then we already talked about this, but the way that it's going to work is we keep getting these fixes into the develop branch, which is Wix 5. Um, and then um, I am the committer. That'll be cherry picking these fixes into a develop branch that will be short lived. Um, and when that branch exists, do not target it. Not that any of you guys would, but any of you listening that aren't here first time, don't target that branch when it exists, but it won't exist for very long. So it'll be that target uh, five. And then if we think it's good for 401, we'll do the work to cherry pick it over. So that is the process. All right. All right. Um, do we have time to go through some V5, old V5 issues? How many do we have? 37. Oof. So on my agenda for today was looking at the known V5, the known issues that were tossed in future, as in sometime in the future, V5. A lot of these were tossed in a long time ago. They're like, yeah, we'll just do this in the future. I think a bunch of them have fallen off um, or are not interesting anymore. Um, but we need to triage these and decide what we're going to do with them. I'd say we could do a dozen. All right. So you want to take a swing at, we can maybe get ourselves down to a page, right? Yeah. So if we get a dozen, yeah, yeah. that'll there get us down to one page, right? There we go. All right. So this is the attack button. We are now talking about WISC 5. So 401, 401, the answer is, uh, to be real clear, 401 is June 5th. I, I can't edit right now without doing all kinds of weird stuff. Uh, it'll June 5th, 2023. That's what we're targeting. We will keep going those issues. Let's switch our discussion to Wix 5 now. So these are Wix 5 issues, rather things that we threw in the bucket of, hey, we should think about these for the future without knowing that they would be considered for Wix 5. And these are sorted by the oldest to the newest, which means we have some very, very old things in here. Like the first one, 4153, comes to us from October 2013. <laughs> um, registry key bundle upgrade codes include goods of all related bundles. And... <laughs> these are going to be... Old complex. We're gonna have to reload a lot of context on these here for a bit too. Um, yeah, that's, I was looking at in in reverse chronological order, and I'm going, oh, well, we can get through a dozen of these really easily. The newer ones. Maybe we should have done the newer ones at first. I don't. We need to yeah, get through the no. old ones. Let's see how this goes. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, this is interesting. Challenges between the related bundles. Yes. Yep, this yeah. is a defect. This is a bug. Is this something you're interested in doing in five, Bob? Well, I I, I took it. Um, well, that was a long time ago. I'm not, it, it, well, well, I guess it was last year. Yeah, it was last year, which was a long time ago. Um, that too. I, I am 
interested um, primarily because my thinking was, as I said on February 24th um, last year, uh, documenting all the related bundle behavior is an important first step. And I think that was just the, you know, it, it, it's all, the code is all there. We, you know, can track pretty easily what it's doing. And if we can lay it out and like I said, draw pretty diagrams, maybe we can figure out, you know, gaps or, or fill in some of the stuff like, so wait, why do we, you know, why do we have this? Why does this work this way? So is this a whip required? Like, is that what this kind well, of says? I, so I think longer term, I think the, the goal of this um, is way bigger than, you know, the, the topic. Um, it's to have a design laid down on paper, virtual or otherwise, for the related bundle behavior, mm -hmm. and then come back and look at, like, this issue in particular, um, you know, is the current behavior the right thing to do? Probably not. But how do you achieve, you know, the desired goal that was presumably the reason for this implementation? Um, I am still interested in all of that. Um, I don't know that I'm that interested in V5. Okay. Until unless, you know, something comes up during V4. Yep based on the changes that happen in burn in V4. Right. So I think we take it out of milestone. We can leave it assigned to you because you're still interested in it. Yep. And then that day when you decide, you know what? I have this thing that I'm interested in doing, then we'll get assigned to a milestone at the appropriate milestone, whatever that might be. Yep, cool. All right, so out of future, this one goes. Um, this is a request to use um, ETW uh, for logging and additional tracing. And ETW is very cool and all these things, but it's not terribly easy to use. Um, and I think it's a neat idea, but I don't plan to do anything like that in five. No, me either. No. Uh, th there's a lot of interesting things we can do. Um, I don't even know if ETW would, would be the recommended thing to do today. Yep. Um, can you tag this whip, please? Sure. And then that will remind me to go bring its whip into here. Um, which is one of those processes I'd like to do. Cool. So not in view future, but it's a cool idea. There's something to that. Um, Wixel files should be able to include other Wixel files. Uh, yep, I still agree with that statement that I made eight years ago, um, <laughs> but I do not plan to do it in V5. All right, so it can stay assigned to you and we can yep. put it. Out of the future, um, support two gigabyte media volumes with media template. This is the whole improving the way that releases work in Wix. And we should do that. That is a big thing. It needs a whip. Um, and I don't think, I don't have plans to do that in five. This is not the thing I'm going to tackle in five. Agreed. So, yep, it's another cool thing. It's like rethinking the way that you specify how Wix releases all of its bits and pieces. Bob has talked about this on and off in various times. Um, and we should do more than what we do now. Oh, you're interested enough to put your name on it. That's cool. But not in V future. But understood. Like, not for five. And so if you ever decide to bring it, we can do that. All right. Burn containers should be abstracted. This would be cool. LZMA would be good to add to burn. There's no yeah, doubt about that. that. That's the goal. Um, right now, everything is based on cabs, and the container API is very cab-like. Yeah. Um, but you know, we've we've shown in Wix4, for example, all of the output types are are secretly zips, and there's all sorts of interesting things you can do. Yeah. Um, and I'm still interested in this, but not in V5. Now. To be clear, these are things out there. Someone said, hey, hey, I want to step up and work on this large feature, like working on LZMA and Burn and stuff like that. These are things that are out there that you could you know, ping Bob and be like, hey, I'd like to work on that. Since you're not going to get it in V5, you're more than welcome to jump into it. Of course, these are also not small issues we're talking about. Right. <laughs> so uh, understandably, 
not uh, trivial to pick up right off the bat. All right, 4910, XML get attribute returns S false and not E found. Is this still true? This Was this changed? Ooh. I don't remember. This came from Jacob. Um, yeah. A long time ago. Um, I generally agree, but it's a pretty big breaking change. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah Sean, Sean did some work there to, to I think, clarify the, the difference. The problem is, a lot of the code, like in burn, especially it parses the bundle manifest. Um, you know, a lot of stuff is optional. So you don't want an error to, yep. to get returned. So, yep. But yeah, no, I mean, it's, this is a very impactful change when this happens, yeah. if when this happens, um, it's currently assigned to Jacob. Hey, Jacob, you're here. Or are you thinking about picking this one up in V5? <laughs> or ever, if not, we can, yeah, the concern is definitely the breaking change. I, I generally, the sentiment I agree with, um, the concern is the impact of doing this. It was like, yeah, S false is a bad idea. Never should have chosen that path. Oops. Now, how do you go through? And but but it was there. That path. Well, yeah, still's early in a number of those things. When do you use S false? Well, the yeah, answer really I mean, is you probably shouldn't. It's a calm just, thing. Yeah, it, there was yeah, a reason. Just, yeah, just don't. Um, do you want to put it in five? Like, is this something you want to tackle in five? Not a, not a firm commitment. I was asking Jacob because he's possibly. I no, that's what I mean. Mind. It, but uh, when, Jacob, when you answer, yeah, it's not yeah. a firm commitment. Yeah. If you want to, also, if you want to consider it later, you can always bring it later and say, hey, just market triage and we will talk about it again. So why don't we, well, it's not in five for now. It can stay in five for now. All right, tell you what, I'm gonna do it the other way. Let's let's exercise that path. Jacob, if you decide that you want to uh, do that, that's not a problem. Just say so market triage and we will talk about bringing it into five at the time at which that happens or future releases when that may be. So let's drop it out of future and then bring it in. Okay, cool. Um, and that could be six if it doesn't make five, that's fine. All right. Um, add multi-instance attribute to the major upgrade element. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of things. This needs a whip. <laughs> this needs a whip. And we can uh, leave it out there up for grabs. Unless you want it, Bob. I'm assuming multi-instance isn't your thing. Nope. Okay, so why don't we pull candle linker off of this even feature? Just market needs whip and then market up for grabs. And if someone wants to tackle multi instancing on major upgrades, I can kind of see what they're thinking, but mm, lots to do there. Multi, yeah, multi instancing is just so ugly. I mean, honestly, for multi instancing to be a big, a good thing, uh, a useful thing, we really need to like add support to burn well like really good support to burn yeah yeah like it's that, not just because you have to do something outside and like and burn being the place that we would do anything outside really should just it needs to be solved there um but burn doesn't like multi instance anyway all right five two two zero related bundle logging doesn't respect the log switches hmm, is this still true i never thought you guys did some things around here a bunch um, of logging stuff but not this one all right Looks like Nier has a fix somewhere else in his private that hasn't been sent over, but that's fine. Uh, is this a five? Is this something you're interested in doing five? Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it I'm not saying tweaks. you should, just. Yeah, no, right. but it, it tweaks the. Okay. It tweaks that, yeah. I don't know how big it is. I have no concept that's, of how big yeah. that is. I'm, I am embracing the it's not a firm commitment. Okay. Five two two six can't set IS web pool managed runtime version to no managed code. Yeah, this would be great. If someone want to do this feature. Um, I don't think that John's going to do it. I don't think he's hanging out with us much anymore, sadly. Um, so I think this goes up for grabs and out of the future. Great. And we probably should remove John now. Very good. Ah, alas. All right. MSP not removed when patch related bundle is uninstalled. Is this still true? Okay, I thought there was work done around this. 
There's another issue on this. Okay. Uh, I think this goes up for grabs and needs a whip for someone to go run through the whole thing. Yep. Yep. All right. These are real super duper edge cases that I'm not sure. I'd be curious if it still exists given some of the changes in V4, but yeah. Uh, request to support mathematical operations within dialogue controls. Um, yeah, could do that. It's interesting. A whole language inside a language. Replace these variables, then do mathematics. Like, I think it'd be interesting to do the negative numbers like uh, theme mutal does too. Like theme mutal, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like kind of take the best of theme mutal and bring it here. Um, MSI UI is in a place that we're really investing a lot in. So if someone wants to do this, this I think this goes up for grabs. It needs a whip. Probably could pull candle off of it and enhancement off of it. Just market whip required, not for grabs. And someone could do that in the future. Yep. But not the future milestone. Someone needs to go jump in and do that. There's a lot that could be done in MSI UI if someone wanted to work on it. The the challenge is that it's hard to. I don't know. Someone have to really make a good case to um. Well, it, it, yeah, it's an interesting area. In MSI UI. There's a lot of there's a lot you could do at at build time. There's Yes. But more happens at runtime and that's where we can't extend it. So Yeah. yeah but yeah, yeah, no, there's certainly things we can do at build time. Well, like one, we should make strongly typed controls, things like that. There's like a yeah, lot that could be yeah. done. It's just uh, MSI UI is limited, so I don't know. All right. Feature we don't need feature requests. All right. Improve syntax analysis. Um yeah, this is a Square back. Yeah, this is better evaluation of controls of of the sub syntax inside attribute values. Um, this is interesting. I I, I get why you want to do that. Um, not a plan for Wix five. Um, so I think this goes up for grabs and needs a whip. So I think it's replace enhancement and linker or enhancement in general with whip required and then we go over there. <laughs> Big enough to be marked enhancement. One of these days, I'm going to through and start deleting labels, consolidating on yeah. the ones that we have. So, um, all right. So that would be up for grabs and uh, not in the future, and whip required. All right, cool. I lost my spot feature. All right, here we go. Burn should support sideloading MSIX packages. Five four two two. I agree. Is this a five thing? <sighs> Well, for what it's worth, I'm pretty sure the title was originally Apex Packages. Yeah, it was. Um, so, you know, um, it's been a while. Um, I mean, yeah, this would be great, but... It's, yeah, it, it it's not uh, on my personal five list. Yep, so, all right. I think we can remove enhancement. Well, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and not in future. Be future. Just be, yeah, if you ever get around to that. All right, the goal here is to clean up vFuture so it's empty and it really only has the things that we are planning to do like in v6, um, which we aren't gonna fill up for until we get to the end of five, probably. But even then, it's the vFuture milestone is only for assigned stuff, as mm, I recall. Yeah, maybe, I don't know, we'd have to think. Okay. I'd have to, I, maybe, let's see. <laughs> Support for, I have to go back and look at the flowchart and reevaluate. Right. Why, why sure. All right. Support IS handler mappings, ISAPI models. Yeah. Cool. This can go up for grabs. Someone could add the functionality for that. I don't know if anybody uses these things anymore. Um, but yeah. So up for grabs. Probably needs a whip so we can get the name of the element worked out and not in the future until someone wants to go and work on that. Um, add search capability inside next mill file. That would be cool. Five, four, nine, four. Um, I think it goes, well, it's currently assigned to this person, but I don't know that he's working on it. It's not here. Maybe we should just drop a comment real quick. Let's leave this in V future right for now and drop a comment. Say, Hey, are you interested in doing this in V5? Okay. Give him a chance to say, yeah, because maybe they just can't make the meeting because the meeting's at the wrong time zone for them. Uh, search capacity inside an XML. How many have I done? Hard to tell. We'll do a couple more. Um, 
5758, local user created by MSI packages absent after major upgrade if removing this part is placed after an initials. Yeah, it's all initialized. This is a downside of the way the rollback and all the those custom actions interact, right? The user, user. Or commit CA, as I recall. Yeah, the commit and all that. So yeah, that's that's rough. Um, yeah, I think this goes up for grabs. And it would be great to solve that problem. This is not an easy problem to solve because it's kind of working around the the hardest parts of the Windows installer transaction um, module model. And users. Users are pretty bad too, because you can't recreate them if you delete them. Because <laughs> if you delete what, a user. Just ask for their password. No, no, no. It's not even the password. You're gonna get a different SID. So they're all like <laughs> they are bad, bad. You delete them, they're gone forever. That's not easy, easy problem to solve. All right, let's do this last one. 5818. Wix quiet exec incorrectly assumes Unicode output if it first reads a single byte. Oh, uh, this is the trying to guess what is the pipe talking to us about. Um, Bob, you want to keep this one? No. No? Doesn't so, particularly interest me. Yep. Yeah, all right. Up for grabs. I think we can clean off the rest of those. Maybe keep extensions. Just... I'm going to get rid of the bug label and the feature label and the enhancement label at some point. <laughs> Just be like, there we go. So, yeah. All right, cool. Let's see if that went and if Bob was able to keep up. How many do we have left? 22. All right, we did better than 13. All right, so that's our first pass at the future. Mostly we're just kind of clearing things out and getting a feel for some of the things that might go. Um, I have bigger issues that I need to write whips for that I want to talk about um, that aren't on here. Um, I don't think any of these are assigned to me. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we will pick this up in the next meeting as well. I want to jump over real quick and see uh, 7379 because uh, Christopher said he just dropped in. Um, if there's any movement on the Wix internal UI bootstrapper application screen flash, um, progress because we're talking about uh, the 401 being released on June 5th. All right, so the we're looking at doing a release on June 5th. There's still time to look into it. It's not a problem. Um, if not, then it'll slide into the future, um, some other thing. So um, that's that one. Then I think we talked about all the rest during here. Oh, Bob, uh, 7422 should be assigned to you, I think. Ah, okay. Just noticed uh, missing someone. All right, cool. All right, so we went through here, did a, a sweep on the vFuture stuff, mostly cleaning out some very, very old issues. Uh, we're up to 2017, so clearly we have a bunch of other stuff to work towards. Um, in the closing few minutes, I want to go back and talk about the five timeline a little bit. I've thought about this. We had the idea of pulling some preview into December and things like that. And the more I think about it, it um, especially if we do a 401 or if we do a dot zero one zero dot one release it, two months after the RTM release, then um, that gives us like seven months of focused time on a release. If that's um, most of June, July, August, September, October, November, December, uh, that gives us seven months, seven months to kind of work our way through uh, whatever release we're doing. I didn't feel like we needed to shorten that any more than that. Um, technically speaking, it's nine months after the release before that. So I'm thinking that this probably is a schedule that we'll stick with for five and see how it goes. Is we'll do a preview in January 5th, do February 5th, March 5th, and then try to release on April 5th and see how it goes. Because shortening this time frame just gives us less time to get stuff done. And I don't know that we need to do open up ourselves to lots and lots of uh, RCs and previews, especially with a shorter release, fewer features. Hopefully, we don't need as many RCs. So this that's is true. that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. And we'll learn from five. And if we get in the five and we don't like where it's kind of at, we can adjust these dates. But this is kind of I'm thinking we're just going to stick here and see how it goes from there. And then what else here? Uh, nope, I started. Wix five deployment has already started. I that was supposed to be started after last meeting. Um, the Wix 4 repo has been renamed to Wix. 
um, and the develop branch is Wix 5 preview one. All of these things have happened since the last meeting. They are, this is now the truth. If you have a repo in Wix 4, I think Git will tell you this has been renamed or something. Anyway, you could just update your remote. It's just the exact same repo to change it from Wix 4 to Wix. And the develop branch is where we're doing work. So everything is rolling forward. Wix 5 development has started. If you have things you want to do in Wix 5, uh, we should have whips. We should have, if they're big, we should have whips. If they're bug fixes, they should already be triaged into the five uh, milestone. And we go from there. All right. Questions, comments, things people want to talk about. What are we doing? We're clearly distracted by 401. I'm looking at other people's pull requests, making them work to build, to get through the build, which takes more time than I would hope, but that's just the way it goes with software. Um, and we're here our way to getting down to 0401 bugs, plus all the other things I do at Fire Giant, which has been really a lot of my focus. So uh, that's what we're at now. I'm hoping in two weeks, because I think two weeks will be a normal, no reason, 16th, right, Bob? June 16th, or May 16th? No, I said June. June, no, yeah. May. Yeah. May 16th, just two weeks from now, we'll be back. My hope is that, I mean, the ideal is that we have very little that we talk about for 401. Um, and we're basically talking about five. And by then I hope I'm talking about some of the features I want to do in five. We'll clean, we'll finish up our sweep through V future. It's actually going pretty quick. I thought it might take us a while, but it's actually going pretty well. Um, and it'll speed up as we get closer as we get to new stuff on. we remember. <laughs> yeah, when we get out of, mm, Golly, where we talked five, six years ago. Yeah, it should go better. Anyway, um, I'm filling space to see if anybody has questions. Um, how to be a member, customer, or not a user in your list of how to be a member, customer, or not a user. So I, I think that's a comment of a thing that I've been starting to lean into more. Painter brings up the member, customer, not a user. So a lot of you guys here that show up in chat regularly, you guys are definitely more like in the member area. You're contributing, you're giving feedback. I really appreciate all that. Um, participating um, and uh, not making demands. You guys know how it works here. Uh, display a sponsor, but yeah, sponsor. I, so I don't believe in sponsors. I should probably should write that down. Um, the sponsor button thing doesn't work as far as sponsorships go. Um, I think that's being proven through the open source space that sponsorships aren't kind of working out in general. Um, but it's definitely something that we're kind of working our way through. Um, for users, it's, you know, for me and users, mostly like just knowing who, what their, their role is, um, and like what they can expect. It's, it's about setting expectations in a lot of case, right? Like when, you know, Zach and Christopher and Jacob and even Brett, who hasn't really, I don't think, well, maybe we haven't found his GitHub things, but when you guys kind of ask things either on the discussions list or you open issues, we're kind of like, we know this person. We know that they do their done due diligence. They hang out with us. They know what's going on. We appreciate, you know, those kind of uh, discussion. We have a better discussion. We can have really good discussions. When you're a brand new person, just act like you're a new person at a party. So a lot of it is those kinds of things that, you're in a new space, you don't know anybody, um, don't be a jerk and make everybody mad at you uh, is really for a lot of it. And it is a story that I'm trying to refine and you're seeing the discussions pop up in discussions, uh, the experiments in trying to refine that story to find the appropriate balance between, um, we do work here, we hang out together, we do stuff here being this meeting, the discussions list, the issues, and we do a lot of it for free here. And so when you show up, just be respectful of the people that are here all the time. This is kind of like our clubhouse. I don't have a better term. I'm trying to come up better. I was going to say it's our house, but it's not because GitHub owns a lot of it. And YouTube owns those things. So it's not like we own these places, but this is the place where we hang out. We get together. And when you sh when someone shows up and just starts yelling at people or telling them what they're doing or that they're doing everything wrong, they should be expected to be treated um, as a person that's not being kind to you know a place where we all hang out and they don't need to be like that. And in the past, I've not done a good job 
of setting that boundary. And so I'm now trying to do a better job of setting that boundary. And if you want to be able to make demands and you're like, no, really, I need this done because I have a need. I depend on Wix, for example. Uh, we have a solution for you now, which is you can go become a customer. You can pay directly for time from like Bob and I to go and get your bugs fixed and other people that have access to Bob and I to go get your bugs fixed on a timeline. And that exists. And if you really need that and you really get into a pressure situation where you're like, I need guarantees, well, that's we have a space for that. And that's when you can become a customer. You can also become a customer because you're like, well, I really want to see all of this continue to work and becoming a customer um, allows me to support all the work that's happening here. That happens as well. Um, but for new people, it's trying to get to a place, an explanation, and expectation of all of us that uh, people are just using this. That's fine. It's free. You can use it. Just don't act like we owe you something because we gave it to you for free. And I'm trying to find that line. And I'm going to continue to press on that this year and into next year, I expect trying to find that line because I find that this is a, it's a epidemic in our open source space. Yeah. Every open source project is trying to, you know, find the line. Exactly. And, um, I, and, and between us here, and I know this will be public and people can go find it, but between us here, I've been trying to find how to tell the story. So you guys can get a very early version of it. I feel a little complicit in creating the space that allowed people to treat maintainers like crap. Like it's okay to treat maintainers this way because I have in the past been very focused on trying to make the Wix project perfect. Like it's gonna solve all the problems and all the things are our fault. So we should try to get them all solved um, because of where I approached the project from out of Wix. And, um, for, and I realized that by doing that, I was saying it was okay to show up and be a jerk for a long time. And now I'm trying to undo some of that. Um, and so you're seeing some of those things and it's a bit of a pendulum. Maybe it's, I will swing a little too far maybe. And some of those people will be like, that was a little mean. I'm like, okay, sorry, it's a little mean, but the, the sentiment stands. Don't be a jerk when you hang out here. Um, and this is not directed at any of you on this call. It's probably not even directed to any of you that watch this meeting regularly. If you're watching this regularly, you guys know how Wix works. You know how things are going. It's directed at those people that show up for the first time and then decide that they're just going to blow us up. Like, I can't believe this. You guys suck. All this stuff when <laughs> we're just like, dude, we did all this for free. And yeah, there's all kinds of things we could do better. But unless you're paying don't make demands. Don't act like it. Because when we're paying, then yeah, the relationships, right? Yeah, if you pay money, yeah, we need to make you happy. Customers. But you can still be nice. Well, <laughs> I'll tolerate a little bit more because um, I understand that people can get under pressure and they can have those kind of things. When you get everything for free, I have just, my sympathy is a lot lower. It's like, what did you do to make it here? Those it's of you that show up in chat, all of you people that are in chat that contribute, that talk, that help us make decisions, that provide feedback, when we're talking about an issue and you're like, hey, how about this or consider that? Zach's comment about, hey, maybe we should make that a warning when we can drill into a little bit and I can say, I don't think it should be a warning for these reasons, but that doesn't mean that it's exactly the correct feature right now. Those conversations help make us better. That's why I appreciate all of you in chat. I do appreciate you, those of you that watch later who I don't know. So I, my interactions with you out there will be different because I don't know who you are. Um, but staying on top of the Wix tool set and helping know what's going on, I appreciate people that also do those kinds of things. So this is the open source space that uh, we're trying to fix the culture a little bit. It will be hard. It is old. It is deeply ingrained. Um, and getting entitled people to recognize that they're entitled and not be entitled is very challenging because none of that is a pleasant experience for anybody involved. So... Um, so that, that's the, the space. So yeah. And you know, Christopher, to your point, yeah. If you're not an enterprise, right? Like I understand like individuals being a member, helping, fixing things, finding bugs, providing really good, uh, bug reports, showing people the correct way to fill out the template, the best way to an helping answer questions, 
participating here. All those are great ways to be members when you're not part of a larger company that has like really demands, expectations, timelines that they have to meet. Um, I know that the Fire Giant support contracts are targeted at those companies that need guarantees. They are not targeted at individual users just wanting to help support. Um, and that goes a lot to my philosophy, having watched sponsorships. They're all too small and they don't, uh, they're not regular. You can't count on them. So uh, the sponsorships do not put food on the table for people. What the, they're, they're called... The, the joke is that they're kind of like called shoe money. It's like, yeah, you can go out and buy a nice pair of shoes occasionally with sponsorships. That's generally what you find. But you're definitely not feeding your family on sponsorships. I have not seen any sponsorships. Ever. And when I say sponsorships, I mean the individual contributions of single to double dollar amounts to projects. Those haven't worked. Sponsorships like corporates putting their logo on a project or getting to put their logo on a project because they do so much work for the project or they pay so much money in the project. That's a different sponsorship. Like being sponsored by a company is basically like a support contract, except it's for advertising dollars. So these are all money things inside the open source space where those of us that are trying to make these projects go and when they get big enough uh, and, you know, feed the family while making all these things go, I don't think these projects get funded by individuals through single double dollar digit um, contributions. They get funded by the companies that need these projects to keep working, should have budgets that then go into, you know what, let's go put the money into this project. It provides us a lot of value. And at the same time, I do believe they should get value out of it, which is why then that they get, in our case, in Wix's case, they get support back that they then get answers, deep, detailed answers um, on an SLA, that's what they get back. And that's a win-win situation. It is hard for random individuals that want to just use the project. We haven't figured out how to make that work. There's a gap between, unless you're a consultant, there's a gap between the shoe money and the you know salary level of money. Yeah, it just, yeah. Yeah, it, it just... With enough users, it doesn't. the The only places where I've seen sponsors, uh, the single double digit place work that maybe work, and I have not been able to verify this because I don't know anybody well enough yet uh, to ask these detailed questions in a way that they would answer me, aka, what's your financial situation? Um, <laughs> is that I think some large JavaScript frameworks have an addressable market large enough that people paying one to twenty dollars a month and most of them being closer to four to five dollars on average um can actually live yeah it, adwords on blogs doesn't work either i mean it, again it's shoe money but actually it's a lot it's very close to the google adwords money right if you ask people on this you're like hey how's it going you're like yeah you know i made two hundred dollars last year on that <laughs> You're like, wow, that's a nice pair of shoes. I mean, it's not even a computer at that point. So, and I, I do shoes. Just, I mean, pick anything that is that could be really expensive and really nice, but doesn't necessarily help you. Certainly doesn't help you live. Um, yeah, that's that's just the the reality of the open source businesses, and we're still working our way through it. And I think we found one that's working pretty well in the Wix space. I think it could work better, and we're going to work on that. But I think providing support, guaranteed support for companies that need it, we have have a number of our customers and they're very happy that go, yes, we're very happy that we get everything we need out of Wix. We can basically treat it like a product and not worry about it, not worry about anything. We just, it just works. We have questions, they get answered. We have bugs, they get fixed, all that. I think that model works very well given the size and target and the kinds of people that interact with the Wix tool set. But it's definitely a space that we're going to talk more about and... Going back to the initial part, I appreciate all of you that are here in the chat, all of you that hang out every week, those of you that show up at uh, Deployment Dojo, those are fun too. Um, and uh, and for all the people that use it for free, you're welcome to use it for free. You're welcome to hang out. You're welcome to start hanging out more and becoming someone. The way you become a member is you start participating more and hanging out, participating, being part of it. And then... And then you, we can have more uh, challenging discussions and things like that. 
Otherwise, as a user, open really nice bug reports. Let us know, you know, the exact issue that you came across and stuff without a whole lot of, I can't believe you guys had this bug. And if you just want to use our free and never mention or talk to us, that's fine too. Okay, a thousand year and burn out. Yeah, Patreon. Yeah, see, the thing is that even a thousand dollars painter is like, that's awesome. That would be great, but you need like a hundred of you for that to work out. <laughs> Ideally more. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. Um, yeah, you need a thousand and a thousand, right? And it just doesn't. I really appreciate it. I, and I, I appreciate your attitude towards it, Christopher. A lot of people don't have that attitude. And that's one of the things that I'm trying to help at least change a little bit of what do you really expect out of an open source project? What can you expect? So those are the discussions. That's the places that we're operating in. Um, and we're going to learn. We're going to learn over the year. I'm going to learn how to try to communicate this well. I do not feel I like very particularly articulate right here, but I know you people. Uh, I'm trusting the people that watch this meeting, the 120 plus ish or whatever that, you know, come along later and watch this meeting after all of us, uh, uh, finish it. I, you know, I trust you guys will kind of understand that, yeah, this, they're, they're working through this process of, oh, this was the first open source Microsoft open source project that had to do everything perfect to, oh, these guys have been doing this for 20 years and they know what they're doing and they have a whole lot more that they could do and they've done all this stuff for free. Let's not treat them badly when we haven't even met them before. We're kind of working our way through all those stories there. So Christopher's asked tons of things, made some good comments. I appreciate all that. I assume nobody else has jumped in. Um, Jacob still isn't big on multi-instance and that's fine. <laughs> I'm not either. Join the club. Yeah, really. All right. We'll be back in two weeks, unless someone else jumps in with a question real quick. It's great to have all of you here. Uh, Ron, I saw you jump in a little uh, bit later. Great, glad you made it. Um, and yeah, we'll be back in two weeks. If you have things you wanna do, go ahead and toss a feature request up there, or if you find something in the list of issues that you wanna work on in Wix 5, let's talk about it, get it in triage. Um, things we can do that Wix 5 is open. We can start on it. I know we're talking a lot about 401. It's a distraction, but we need to get it done. We will do so. And we will talk about both of those things, hopefully more five than four in two weeks. All right. Till then, all you guys take it easy. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye.